Welcome to the second video of the A to Z Master Quest Cape Guide. I'm Hunter S, called the RuneScape Lorehound, and today we'll be covering the following requirement, Ali the Trader. As I mentioned in part one of this series, it is important to start some requirements for the Master Quest Cape early. Therefore, I would recommend watching my lengthiest requirements videos first before watching the A to Z series. A suggestion card will appear momentarily so you can click on it. The two requirements to begin as soon as possible are Eastern Adventurer and Following in the Footsteps. For these videos, as always, I'm going to assume you already have the Quest Point Cape, but I will attempt to include the quests, skills and any other requirement you need for each achievement. In addition, I do try to make these video guides Iron Man friendly. So with that, let's get started with Ali the Trader. The achievement that we are covering today is called Ali the Trader, and this is worth 15 rune score. You must unlock all Rogue Trader merchandise. To do this, you need to have completed the Feud quest, to have completed enough of the quest, Itch Larin's Little Helper, to be able to access Sofanum. Although, I would always recommend having the full quest completed when attempting an achievement that requires only some of it. You'll need some coins, uh, around 100 coins for the street urchin. Three dyes of any colour. Blue dye may be the easiest to collect for an Iron Man. Woad leaves can be bought from Weiss and the Gardener in Falador for 25 coins each, as I'm showing you on screen. If you take six of these to Aggie the Witch in Draenor with 15 coins, she will make you three blue dyes. You will also need three animal pelts of the same kind. Cowhides work, which can be bought from the Grand Exchange or found easily from slaughtering cows if you're an Iron Man. Wool can also be used, which is easy to obtain. So, on with the achievement. I've split this one into three parts with the help of RuneScape Wiki. Visit Ali Morrisane, the sketchy businessman who can be found north of the Alcarid Lodestone. Ask him how he is. He will tell you that he is still selling and would like to expand his stock by selling something magical. You will suggest runes, to which he would express his excitement to make more money. For part one of this achievement, we are going to be visiting Albury's rune shop in Varrock. Teleport to the Varrock lodestone and run northeast to arrive at Albury's rune shop. Speak to Aubrey and tell him that you're here to talk about a business deal with Ali Morrisane. When asked if Ali is trustworthy, your character will lie through their teeth and say that he is. Aubrey will agree to start sending rune shipments to Ali, in which Ali will take a cut of the profits. Return to Ali Morrisane by teleporting to the Alcarid Lodestone and running north. Ali will talk to you about the rune stock arriving in bizarre containers. For the achievement, there are two caskets that need to be opened, a small casket and a large casket. Tell Ali you want to see his selection of runes, and he will tell you that he doesn't really have a selection and will ask you to solve the puzzle that Aubrey has placed on the runes. For both of these caskets, players can either force the box, where the chance of success increases with higher strength levels, this also gives strength experience. You can pick the lock on the box, where the chance of success increases with the higher thieving levels, this also gives thieving experience, or examine the lock which means that you will have to solve a rune dooku. The large casket can only be opened by the completion of a rune dooku puzzle, so you may want to bear that in mind when trying to open the small box. What I mean to say is, some practice may be a good idea. But what is a rune dooku puzzle, I hear you ask? Essentially, a rune dooku puzzle is a sudoku, where runes have replaced numbers. You will see how to solve a small rune dooku box on the recording that Dragon D94 kindly provided for me. As you will see, there is only one of each rune in every horizontal or vertical line. 
You do not need to have different rooms in each diagonal line, which makes this puzzle a little bit easier. Each box is random for every player, meaning that I can only provide so much guidance. The RuneScape Wiki gives good advice. If you are struggling, find a Sudoku solver online and replace the runes with numbers. For example, find a 4x4 Sudoku solver, label Water 1, Earth 2, Fire Runes 3 and Air Runes 4 and plug in the numbers. The online Sudoku machine will then solve it for you. If you're not a fan of Sudoku puzzles, you may want to use a 9x9 Sudoku solver to solve the large Runduku box, as this is fairly complicated. Once the box is open, you will have completed part 1 of this achievement. A completed version is shown on screen now. The second person we're going to be visiting is the Blackjack seller in Polnivniak. Teleport to Polnivniak by either taking the magic carpet from Shantae's Pass, teleporting to the bandit camp Lowstone and running east, or by using a Polnivniak teleport scroll as shown in the video. Find the blackjack seller who is west of the well. You must obtain two types of blackjack, the offensive and defensive blackjack. For the offensive blackjack, you need to make a bet with the blackjack seller that he cannot knock you out with two hits from a blackjack. After some humorous dialogue, the blackjack seller will agree that he needs to upgrade his blackjack and will consent to stocking Ali Morrisane with the new offensive blackjack stock. Return to Ali Morrisane and he will now tell you that he wants to stock a more varied selection of blackjack. So now you must return to the blackjack seller in Polnivniak again. At this time select the hmm I'll have to think of a cunning plan option which could also be a reference to the British comedy show Blackadder. This will begin the journey to unlock the defensive blackjack. The blackjack seller will dismiss your idea of another type of blackjack. And so the street urchin will catch your attention and will propose a mutually beneficial deal where he will gain more stock to steal and you will gain Ali Morrisane more variety. Pay the street urchin 100 coins and then talk to the blackjack seller again. The street urchin will aggravate the blackjack seller by stealing some stock. Your character will cleverly suggest that to stop the urchin stealing his stock, perhaps the seller should produce a more defensive blackjack. The seller will then agree to stock Ali Morrisane with new defensive blackjacks. When you return to Ali in Al Karid, he may say that he wants more varied blackjacks, but this isn't necessary for the achievement. So congratulations, you've completed part two out of three. The final seller we're going to visit is Siaman, who is the dyer in Sofenum. With the three unnoted coloured dyes in your inventory, teleport to Sofenum by any means. You could take the magic carpet from Polnivniak, or teleport to the Menophos Lowstone and run east through the gates, and then run northeast to arrive at Seaman's house. Talk to Seaman, who will be quite hostile in the first instance. You will say that Ali Morrisane wants her to supply some garments for his shop. She agrees only if you can get her three dyes and three animal pelts. Give her the dyes and she will agree to send some clothes up to who she calls the merchant thief, Ali Morrisane. Return to Ali and he will tell you he wants a bigger variety of clothing stock and tells you to talk to the cranky old so-and-so who is Seaman, to increase her stock variety. With the three animal pelts, e.g. the cowhide or wool, in your inventory, return to Seaman. Give her the animal pelts and finally, return to Ali. With this, you should have completed part three and unlocked all of the rogue trader's stock. Congratulations, you have completed the Ali the Trader Master Quest Cave achievement. I do hope this guide was helpful to you, if it was please subscribe as I will be releasing more of the A to Z MQC guides periodically. We will be carrying on with the A's next time as there are still a few more to go, but also as always if you have a question or you get stuck at a certain point in the achievement please leave me a comment down below and I will try my best to help you out as best I can. Finally, the last thing for me to say is have a lovely day knowing that you helped out a crooked merchant scam his way through three innocent shopkeepers, all for a cape. But to be fair, it's definitely worth it.